Waveshare have launched a number of new RP2350 boards, including the RP2350 Touch LCD 2.8, a 2.8 inch display uh, with touchscreen capability driven by the RP2350. That's the microcontroller from the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. This is a touch display even big enough for my large finger, so let's take a look. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Please remember to subscribe and join my community. I've shown some of the Waveshare RP2040 displays boards on this channel before. They're really cool, but were generally quite small. Good as a display, but needs quite a lot of care actually to make a touch user interface that is usable for fingers. The 2.8 inch display moves us forward to a small mobile phone size screen. It's responsive and supports five touches at once, so I could even make it into a small gaming controller. It's got IMU as well, sound output, two speakers, and a, all the hobbyist capability and connectivity we could want. Let's take a look at the new board and supporting libraries. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip? There's that super thanks button below the video, or alternatively, there's a payment link in the description too. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. Of course, I'd love to meet you all there too. So if you're gonna be there, do get in touch and we can meet up. Please hit the like button on the video and the subscribe for more. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. One of the use cases for this display, in my mind, is as an IoT device, providing a UI that is communicating with services on the internet. For these types of use cases, I'll need to secure the device and its communication. Wolf SSL will be my go-to partner for these projects, using their library for securing boot and TLS communication. Wolf SSL libraries are released under GPL version 2 license and therefore are available for open source projects or commercial projects via a commercial support license. Go check out Wolf SSL after the main video, of course. So, this is the Waveshare Touch um, LCD 2.8 inch screen. So, let's have a look at uh, what's in the box. So let's what have we got in here? So, so we've got a screen, uh, the touch screen, and we've got uh, lots of uh, connectors off of it. This is uh, much better than uh, some of the predecessor devices I've seen from Waveshare. We've got nice connectors out here to um, I squared C, to serial. Uh, we've got batteries connectors. We've got speaker connectors. We've even got a micro SD card on there. Um, I'll go through the spec on a, a, a slide as well. But they've also given us a, a nice set of uh, wires and connectors actually to, to work with. So we, we've got stereo speakers. Hey, we could, we could do sound. I don't really often do sound on my projects, I must admit. Perhaps uh, with this sort of board I ought to start. But um, yeah, we've got a couple of speakers there. And we've got a couple of uh, connect, a connector here for the uh, serial and a connector here for the um, I well that that will be the serial one. It's got um, I think that will be the I two I squared C one, and then we've got a bigger connector here, which is coming off here, which I think will have um, uh, the uh, SPI and uh, other connections on there as well. Uh, on the unit as well, there are three switches on the back. Um, of course, they are reset and boot cell. Uh, though on an RP2350, we can reuse boot cell to do other things. And there is also a uh, user-defined switch. Uh, though, and then we've got um, the 
screen itself and it's got a nice protector on there. So this Touch 2.8 device is a 43 by 57 millimeter screen, which is a good size, 240 by 320 pixels, all RGB. Now that's probably why we've got this on an RP2350 rather than an RP2040, because uh, the screen buffering that much uh, screen space would be tricky on an RP2040, if not impossible. We're using the CST328 display driver and a CST816T uh, touch uh, driver. But actually, you know, those are all embedded nicely in libraries that come with the module. And we'll talk about them in a minute. It's got an IMU on there as well, so that we can actually see rotation and, and gravity effects on the device and a real-time clock. We've got the SD card reader. Uh, a USB-C of course, and three buttons, uh, which of course are reset, boot cell, and uh, a user define button. You've got battery power connectivity as well, so we can actually power it from a battery, uh, real-time clock battery, um, so that we can keep that going, and speaker outputs, so we can make lots of noise. As well as that, we've got some standard uh, interfacing. So we've got UART coming off of GP0 and GP1. I2C uh, is off of GP6 and 7. Um, so that's I2C0. And we've got um, a IO port, which pretty much actually just does the UART, the I2C and two other lines, GP28 and, and 29. Um, of course, we can reuse uh, at the uh, UART or the I2C as other things if we chose to do so. So could I do that? So one of the use cases I think I, I want to do is to give this board uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and use it as an IoT device. Could I connect it up to an RM2? Um, I think so, though that's going to be challenging. I do need three GPIO lines to do that. Now I've got 28 and 29, which I think I can use to drive the RM2, but I'm going to need other, another one. So I probably have to sacrifice um, RX of, off my um, UART to do that. But um, I, I will try that possibly on a later video. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments. One thing that isn't there and um, capability is to be able to do uh, SWD, single wire debug, uh, uh, debugging and indeed flashing of the device. SWD has not been pulled off of the RP2350 so that is not available. That's in my view a great shame that would have made this a much better development board and one that I can play with and I don't I don't know quite why uh, Waveshare are not supporting that. I guess because of the dominance of uh, Python and MicroPython not needing that. Whereas, you know, as a C++ developer and C developer, really I do want SWD debugging available to me. The factory demo on here basically just shows uh, touch and its touch response. So if I draw with one finger, we get a nice little line in one color. Two fingers, you get two colors. Three fingers, we get three colors at once. Four fingers, four colors, five fingers. Five different colours at once. We've also got an IMU on board so we've got stats and data on accelerations and uh, gravity effects which I can see so we can see me rotating the board and those numbers. So this is another of Waveshare's demos, a full demo of the LVGL system. So we've got nice scrollable through these pages uh, we've got, you know, complete input of dates there. Uh, we can have drop downs, sliders. Uh, let's go on to, we've got tabs, which I could also slide left and right to if I get above that. There we go. Got some nice graphs here displaying. Uh, animator of the graphs too, which is uh, always looks cool, I think. Um, yeah, nice uh, little network speed there, We're completely faked, or of course, but um, yeah, and uh, more more analytics, even a fake little uh, shop there, 
really, really nice responsiveness on the touch. Uh, graphics look really, really good. Um, and it, you know, unlike the smaller little displays, for my big fingers, you know, this is actually really quite usable. The WaveShare demos ship with three libraries. BSP, which is really the hardware libraries to actually get this device to work. LVGL, which is a standard graphics library for working with uh, components on, and graphical UIs. And a uh, FAT file system library for the SD card. So the BSP library uh, gives you access to things like battery level and battery information if you're running off battery, as well as the touch screen and display interfaces and the real-time clock as well and the IMU unit. So those are all nicely packaged in a single library, which is nice on this device. Others have split that out into lots of little libraries, which becomes a little bit more challenging to link and, and work with. The version of LVGL that ships with the demos is 840. Uh, they've shipped a local copy within the zip file. Um, I, for my release, because I tend to work off GitHub, I've actually made it a submodule off GitHub and gone straight to the original LVGL library, and that works really very well. There is also a FAT file system library for being able to uh, read and write to the SD card. And that's using a 4-bit interface, which is really nice. The 4-bits uh, is going to make that considerably faster than some of the examples I did on this channel, just using uh, the SPI interface to an SD card. So it um, be interesting to try that out. So OK, it looks like great hardware, and it seems to have some good libraries, and their demos look really special and great. But that isn't really the point. It's actually what can we do with these devices, how we can we get them to work. So that's what I want to do, and I want to actually build up a demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with LVGL. I'm going to do a little animation around uh, my company name, Dr. John EA. Now, this is a previous demo that I've actually written for the RP2040 Touch. So what I was interested in is, is can I just lift those widgets, drop them in, and it will all work? And the answer to that is yes. So let's just have a chat around a project structure built um, using the libraries that have been shipped from Wayshare. So I've got my libraries uh, in my lib folder. Um, not quite where they place theirs, but that's the, where I wanted to place them. And we've got this BSP library, um, which is giving us basically access to all of the hardware. And that's just copied directly from the demo. Uh, the LVGL library I'm also using, but actually I've taken that directly from LVGL and uh, I've then pulled that to version 8.4.0 rather than uh, hard coding the copy that came with the demo. And I'm not using the SD card uh, reader in this for FAT32. So how about my example? How have I structured that? What have I set up? Well, I've, I do what I normally do and have make files for each of my libraries. So I created a little uh, BSP make file for the uh, BSP library, uh, which is giving us the battery and the display and um, the IMU and uh, touch interface and all of those. And that's up there, that's pretty standard um, CMake structure really. And I have the same thing for LVGL. And then that gives me the ability to uh, load those in um, as includes, tell it where my library path is if it's not a lib directly underneath the project. And it isn't in this case because my intention was to write several examples, though I've only done one so far. And then I'm going to put a port folder because there is a bit of porting that needs to go on to LVGL. Um, and uh, these are files that are also taken from the demo and they provide uh, the porting to get LVGL working on this hardware. And we've got the configuration for it. The configuration you may want to change because there are things like if you wanted a different font size, then you need to update this. Or if you wanted to switch from portrait to landscape use of the display. So the actual program is in here and our project is in here. And uh, we're again, I'm just using pretty much 
the what was in the demo for LVGL. We are adjusting the clock speed. I think they're doing that in order to uh, change the speed for SPI talking to the um, the display itself. And uh, then we've got uh, all of the initialization code that gets run. And the only bit I'm changing in this is actually adding um, my widgets. And uh, uh, they're coming in from here. And I've got a, a little widgets initiation utility that is just going to set up my widgets following a uh, normal uh, LVGL style. Um, so I'm just going to uh, set up a set of uh, arcs and um, a label. And that's pretty much it to get that demo that you've seen. And that that was all the code, actually the widgets that I'd used previously on the RP2040 Touch. And we're able to reuse that here and get that running up nicely on this new display really, really easily and quickly. So actually the structure of their libraries uh, and the way that this works is actually very easy to create your own projects. Um, I do adapt it somewhat from what is in the demo there um, from our WaveShare uh, because well, you, you need to because you need to make it a separate project. And that's sort of what I've done in this example. WaveShare makes some great boards and at great prices too. I've criticized them in the past for their libraries and demos. The library and demo for this board have moved on a great deal. The demos are understandable, though they could be a little bit clearer. The structure of the libraries is good and much easier to bend to our own project needs. I'll certainly be using this board in some of my upcoming projects. So keep watching to see them. And let me know what projects you would do with this display in the comments below. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, then why not drop me a cash tip? There's that super thanks button below the video and there's a payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And of course, I'd love to meet you all there too. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.